Events are a great tool for game development. They can keep your code clean, help make it extensible if you want to add or change functionality in the future, and make it easier to reuse your code. So in this video, we're going to talk about what events are, why they're so useful, and how you can use them in your projects. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button, and if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. Let's start by talking about what events are and why they're so useful. A simple way to think about an event is as a notification system. When the event is evoked, it'll send out a notification and any function listening to the event will take the information from the notification and use it to perform some other action. A function that's listening to an event is called a subscriber, and the event itself is called a publisher. An event can have as many subscribers as you want, which means you can trigger any number of responses with a single event. The event doesn't even have to know anything about the subscribers to do this, which is why events are good for decoupling code to keep it clean. So instead of hard coding something like on a key press perform some action, you can instead invoke an event when the key is pressed. This means that you can easily add or remove subscribers from the event and completely change the result of pressing the key without changing the code. As an example, we can create an event called on space pressed that gets invoked whenever we press the spacebar. The event itself has no functionality assigned to it. So what if we want anything to happen when we press spacebar? We'll need to create a function that does whatever it is we want to and then subscribe this function to the event. This is great because it lets us decouple the resulting action from the event, so we can trigger just about any response we want from the event. With that understanding of what events are, we can start looking at how we create events in code. Let's stick with the same example and create an event called onSpacePressed. First, we're going to need to add using system. But now we can create a public event. And before we can give it a name, we need to specify what type of event it is. For now, we're going to use an event handler. This is called a delegate, and I'll talk about them more later. But for now, just think of it as something that defines the data format the event will use to communicate to the subscribers. Now in the update method, we can say if spacebar is pressed, call on space pressed by saying on space press dot invoke. This is going to give us some errors since the event handler delegate requires us to send some extra information. More specifically, this type of event wants us to include the object that's sending the event. So for this parameter, we're going to use the this keyword. The second parameter required is an event args which is a way of sending additional information to the subscribers. For now, we're just going to pass event args.empty, which means we aren't sending any additional information. Now, before we can use this event, there's one more problem we need to address. Earlier, I said the event doesn't need to know anything about the subscribers, which is true, but we need to make sure that there is at least one subscriber before we invoke an event. If we try invoking an event that has no subscribers, we're going to get a null reference, and that could crash your game. Luckily, it's easy to check if there's any subscribers, because if there are, the event is null. So we can say, if the onSpacePressed event is not null, invoke the event. And there's actually a shorthand way to do this in c -sharp. Instead of using this if statement, we can just add a question mark before the dot .invoke, and this does exactly the same thing as the if statement by making sure the event isn't null before calling invoke. Now that we have our event set up, we can create our first subscriber. For this example, I'm going to create a function that will print out a message. When we create these functions, we need to make sure that the parameters match up with what's specified in the delegate. So in this case, since we're using an event handler, let's add an object and some event args as the parameters. Now in the start function, we can subscribe this function to the event. Keep in mind that the subscribed functions don't have to be in the same script or even on the same game object as the event, as long as you have a reference to the event in order to subscribe to it. Now let's go test out the event and make sure everything is working right. You can see that each time I press space, we're going to get a new message in the console. Unsubscribing from events is just as easy to do. We just use the minus equals instead of a plus equals. 
So let's have this function unsubscribe from the event after it's invoked the first time. Now if we go to test again, we can see if I press space, we'll get our message the first time, but after that it stops displaying. Now what if we want to be able to change the message we send to the subscribers instead of having it hard-coded in the function? This is where we can make use of the event args in the event handler. What we need to do is create a new event args class that inherits from the base event args. Now we can add any information that we want to pass to the subscribers. So in this case, we want a string for the message we're going to send. Now in the line where we create our event, we're going to use angle brackets on our event handler to specify that we want to use our own custom event args. This is going to give us some errors though. So first, we need to go change the event args we send when we invoke the event. We'll create a new message event args and then specify our string. Now in the send message function, we need to first change the type of event args we're passing in. And then we want to change our log to use the message from the event args instead of just the hard-coded message. If we run this now, we'll see that we're displaying the new message. This is just a simple example of how to use event args, but you can add any values you want and have the subscriber do different things based on the data they receive. Another way to pass data from event to subscriber is to create a delegate to replace the event handler we have been using. I want to go into a bit of detail here because I feel like this part helps with understanding how events work a little better. So let's start with a definition. A delegate is someone that's sent or authorized to represent others. You may be familiar with the use of a delegate to represent the thoughts of a larger group of people. And in this case, the concept is basically the same. But instead of a person, a delegate in code is a representation of a function signature. So we can think of a delegate as a representation of the functions that will be subscribing to an event. Like I said earlier, the delegate is responsible for telling the event how the subscribers want the data to be formatted. So let's create a simple delegate. To do that, we start with the delegate keyword, and we also want to make it public so that we can use it from anywhere. Now we'll create the function signature, which just means we're specifying what types of inputs and outputs will be used. In most cases, you'll have a return type of void, since each of the subscribers would return a value, you would only get the value from the last subscriber. If you do need a return value, it's usually done within the event args of an event handler. So we're going to say the return type for this is void. Then we can give the delegate a name. Then, just like when we create a function, we put all of the inputs in parentheses. In this case, we just want a string that contains our message. Now I'm going to change the delegate on our event to use the message delegate we just created. Then we need to go fix the errors again because the event is expecting different parameters now. So we'll change the invoke to just pass in our message, and the send message function needs to accept a string now. There's already a function called send message that accepts a string as an input, so you may get a warning from Unity, but it's okay in this case, we can just ignore it. Now we can hop back into Unity and we'll see that I still get our message when I hit space. Unity also has some built in events that are unsurprisingly called Unity events. These can be useful for a few different reasons, but primarily because they're accessible through the inspector. If we want to use Unity events, we need to add using Unity Engine.events. Then we can declare a new Unity event. Unlike with the C Sharp events, for Unity events, you don't have to declare a delegate. Since we don't specify a delegate, there's no special function signature we have to use, so just about any function can subscribe to a Unity event. You can also use Unity events to do simple things in the inspector like disabling objects or components. So let's add an object that we can disable with our Unity event. And now in the inspector, we can drag the object into the Unity event, and in the drop-down menu we select Game Object and set Active. Then we can choose the input that's sent to the event if the function takes any inputs. In this case, we have a checkbox for the Boolean input of the setActive function. 
So now let's go into our script and we're gonna invoke the Unity event when we press space. One other difference with Unity events is that we don't need to include the question mark when we invoke it. It doesn't hurt if you do though, so if you forget when to use them and when not, it's better just to include it. Now if we go back and we hit space in the game, we'll see that the cube gets disabled. That's all for this video, so if it helped, be sure to leave a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.